Hi, I'm Dr. Ted Norris, and we're here discovering a little bit about our world right now, and particularly that part of it that we don't really have the straight history of, and I'm here with Phil McConnell. Explain who you are, Phil. Uh, I'm a Air Force brat. Uh, I am a retired lieutenant colonel from the North Dakota Air National Guard. I graduated from the Naval Academy. I flew for the Marine Corps. I flew for Northwest Airlines for 29 years. Uh, after I was caused to step aside due to my whistleblowing, I went over to a Muslim nation and I flew non-Boeing airliners for 18 months over there. And uh, I am in Austin to speak about something totally unrelated to aircraft. However, I understand that today's interest is in the illegal modifications to airliners within the United States of America that are loosely grouped as a entity called the Strangler Suite. Strangler Suite. Well, explain a little bit about those modifications and how that interacts and interfaces with 9-11. Well, everyone who has heard of 9-11 uh, has been told that it was done by a group of young Muslim gentlemen from different countries. Uh, and even though they were participants, uh, the aircraft, in fact, the airlines and the airliners and those companies and flight numbers are American and United, and with American it's 11 and 77, with United it's 175 and 93. Those airliners were not hijacked by humans, they were hijacked by technology, and I know we're not supposed to do this on camera, but there's four technologies, and people are more visual than oral sometimes, mm -hmm. and um, the technologies, and I'll say them very slowly so people can get it right the first time and Google it, first and foremost and most central, is the Boeing uninterruptible autopilot and this is a uh, autopilot that was actually announced subsequent to my first legal or my first lawsuit and that autopilot can be remotely triggered ostensibly to interrupt the human hijacking of an airliner and that is a totally benign and reasonable facility unfortunately on 9-11 we saw the ugly side of that facility and that is that the same airliner that can be remotely taken away from hijackers intending to do ill to the passengers, it can be remotely taken away from the crew members. And just in the title, Uninterruptible Autopilot, and I would encourage everyone in the sound of my voice to Google that, once it's electronically taken, it cannot be delivered back to the crew if the crew survives and if the crew wishes to command the airplane. Uh, it, the aircraft can be landed at any of 108 facilities around the globe. And this is not rocket science, and it's not brand new. This technology came out uh, as early as 1995, and I mean specifically the Boeing Uninterruptible Autopilot, 1995. They did not acknowledge it until 2007, and they did not uh, patent it until 2003. So we got the Boeing Uninterruptible Autopilot, got the QRS-11 gyro chip, and the QRS-11 gyro chip is a specific piece of hardware that's intended for Maverick missiles built by Raytheon Corporation. And there are supersonic uh, missiles that attack things and kill them. Uh, why they were put into Boeing airliners is a question for the Department of Justice, the FAA, and ALPA. But the Department of Justice, the FAA, and ALPA don't care to investigate it. And I say that because I filed three lawsuits and... Uh, I would say the most irresponsible is the Airline Pilots Association because unlike the other two entities, they, it's not that they simply don't investigate, but they also ridicule those people that bring the charge. But um, my career has been built on safely flying airplanes, and I'll just regurgitate two regulations, one federal, one from Northwest Airlines. The federal regulation, they can look it up. It's FAR, Foxtrot Alpha Romeo 121.533. And the Northwest, which is now part of Delta, that document was FOM Fox Oscar Mike 911. And uh, I've addressed the Boeing Interruptible Autopilot, the Raytheon produced BEI Corporation built QRS 11 gyro chip, whose patent was managed by Rose Law Firm in Arkansas. The third piece of illegal Modifications done to all four of the jets and all four of the drones used on 9-11 is Smacksonic insulation, which is a thermal, vibrational, and sound insulation uh, put into the 
fuselages inside the fuselage of these airliners ostensibly to make them quieter, uh, less vibrational, and more comfortable. Unfortunately, Smacksonic Corporation, which has recently taken down some of their advertising for Smacksonic, um, it's, it's two layers of polymer around some rocket fuel, and when the rocket fuel is remotely triggered, it goes from ambient temperature, say 70 degrees Fahrenheit in an aircraft cabin, to 5,800 degrees in one second, and it vaporizes everything, turns it into plasma. There's no evidence left. And see, these people that uh, put on these types of attacks, they're very um, evil, they're very powerful, they're very well connected, but they're not overly intelligent. That's my opinion. Uh, the last thing is the KU band, and anyone out there can look at KU, that's Kilo Uniform. KU band radio frequencies are used to uplink and downlink entertainment, uh, emails, all sorts of information from people in the aircraft. If you're pick any airline you want, uh, I wouldn't recommend picking L Al. They're very serious about security. Uh, so let's pick somebody that's not L Al. Uh, Lufthansa, one of the best airlines in the world, they're the ones that found the Boeing uninterruptible autopilot. If a Lufthansa airplane has a KU antenna on it, yes, you can use Hotmail, and yes, you can use your internet. But unfortunately, yes, they can send signals to the aircraft that if you're a private citizen trying to go on vacation or business across the Atlantic, you don't want KU band facilities. So there we have it, Boeing Uninterruptible Autopilot, QRS-11 gyro chip, Smacksonic insulation, and KU band. And if anybody wants to wrap it up and find it in one location, they can Google Civil Case 1 colon 08 hyphen 1600 parentheses Romeo Mike Charlie. I didn't quite understand the, the band, the KU band. It's a frequency, radio frequency band. Uh huh. And that's a band which is uh, controlled from ground stations around the world through satellites to aircraft. And that's how they send. Well, if you're, if next week you flew to London and you wanted to email someone in this room about this document we're producing, you could get online on the aircraft and the signal would go from the aircraft KU band antenna. And if anybody wants to see a KU band antenna, we've got them all over our writing at both Captain Sherlock and Able Danger. And most airliners have them. And uh, many people get overwhelmed trying to find specific items. An easier way to find out is when you're boarding the airplane, if it says WIFI mm -hmm. on the side of the aircraft on the fuselage, that means wireless. And, and and that's that's also used for nefarious reasons. Is yes, that right. It, it was Talk used. About that. It was used for nefarious reasons uh, on 9/11 uh -huh. when the airliners that were electronically hijacked by the people that we know, um, meaning we know, not he knows, but the people that electronically hijacked United 93, United 175, American 11, and American 77, they used KU band antennas and KU band transmissions to take those aircraft in, in order to make the uninterruptible autopilot start and to do you know to interface with the other three that you've talked about yes it needs, that's it needs that's, the KU band to do that yes that's okay. right okay I see I see I'm clear do you know of other instances that has been used other than those times in on the 9-11 uh, eight planes as a matter of fact I do and I'm, I thank you very much for asking me because that sort of slipped my mind uh, I shared this information on the 11th of December of 2006 with the North American Air Defense Command, which is at uh, Peterson Field or those environs. And I say it that way because at one point they were in Cheyenne Mountain. Uh, they have migrated through Peterson Field, Colorado. Uh, they have new facilities, and uh, at least one of their new facilities is called Shriver Air Force Base in Colorado. They've got immense capability. they got immense uh, capacity. Uh, they can keep us safe. But when I communicated on the 11th of December with Admiral Tim Keating, who happens to be my Naval Academy Class of 71 classmate, I did not speak to him directly, but I spoke to his office, including an Air Force major and a Navy captain, and they did not take this ball and run with it. That was the 11th of December of 2006, the same time I let ALPA, uh, Airline Pilots Association International, know and uh, a certain airline company, and a three-star admiral in Annapolis who's going to remain nameless simply because 
he's not worthy of mention. Uh, but when I mentioned this on the 11th of December, it may well have derailed something planned for shortly thereafter, but on the 1st of January of 07, which is exactly 20 or 21 days later, Adam Air, and that's spelled A-D-A-M-A-I-R, Adam Air Flight 574 was vaporized near Indonesia over the water. It was off course. It was over the deepest portion of the water. Everybody aboard was killed, and it was done consistent with my expressed warnings to the FBI. Um, Another example. Do we? Uh, do you have a? Do you have a, a suspicion about what that was? Why that was done? I do, but I need some water for my voice. So could we pick that up in the next? Okay, uh, we'll pick next it up ep- in the next episode. Thank you, Field McConnell. Tune right back. Thank you, Doctor. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos, ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me to enter the Psyche Truth channel.